Welcome to the rest of my life. I'm Lance Ash. And um, as it is becoming increase, increasingly darker as I leave the house, it's harder for me to read my little card containing my list of topics to talk about. But we'll do the best we can. I need to drive a little more safely. Spent the weekend watching videos of people driving stupid and crashing into stuff. I tend to get aggressive on the road. All right, let's see here. Let me see. First topic. What does that say? Oh, yeah. Um, what does that say? Oh, okay. First topic is the movie Less Than Zero came out in November of 87. And uh, I don't know what got me thinking or looking it up. Something. I don't know. I know what it was. I was trying to confirm whether James Spader was the evil drug dealer. And um, he was, much to my surprise. Sort of, no, not really surprised, because that's, that's how I remembered it. But he's just become such a different person now, really. Different type of actor. But um, I'm surprised I went to see that. I went to see it with my cousin. And I just don't know what would have compelled us to go see such a dreary slog. Another thing, I looked at the soundtrack and I was surprised to see that Danzig was on the soundtrack. But I remember a scene in that movie where, um, is it Andrew, Andrew McCarthy? is having sex with his girlfriend up against a wall and the David Lee Roth song Bump and Grind is playing but it's not on the soundtrack which is odd. I'm pretty sure that's that movie. It's got to be that movie. I don't, go to, I don't go to see movies that much and I just... Well, I tell you, I shouldn't be surprised. I went to see uh, Angel Heart which was bleh, horrible. Horrible. All those movies in the 80s were so depressing. All that stuff, it's so funny. Th looking back on it, they had the so-called Brat Pack with Molly Ringwald and all those people. And I, um, I tell you, it was one of the few times in my life when I've sort of halfway identified with something that was um, contemporary and... Um, in sync with my demographic I kind of felt like it, it, it those people and their movies did sort of um, typify or exemplify my generation's I don't know the general zeitgeist of that generation at that, that time period but I remember it all came to an end for me I, I kind of there was a there was like a, a definite demarcation when I dropped all that. Um, there was a movie she was in called I think it was called Fresh Horses, and it it came on TV. I was living in this apartment in Athens, and my girlfriend was visiting. The TV was on the floor, and I remember. We were watching it, and I, I kind of made a move on her during the during the movie, and she rebuffed me, and it, her, not wanting to do anything, sort of, it felt like it coincided with the bleakness of the movie for some reason, and I just. I just felt like it's, it's time to drop all this. It's time to stop seeing these people in their movies. It's about the time Molly Ringwald disappeared. Oh, okay. What's next on the list here? Oh, okay. I know two things that are on the list without looking. Related to that, I got to wondering what ever happened to Danzig. You know, what's he up to? And I, I was just shocked. This guy, not, not really shocked because he's been aping Rob Zombie for years now. But shocked to find out he's 
that he did a movie. I didn't even know about it. And he's got a new one coming up. These really cheap, trashy horror movie things. Um, I used to be such a big Danzig fan that I bought a couple of his comic books. And they're horrible. I mean, they're ugh, just garbage. Anyway, um, so... I was wondering, you know, what was up with him? Is he, is he going to continue to try to put out albums? Because the last couple of records were just so thin and feeble. His first four records are fantastic. A lot of people didn't like the fourth one because it had more of a, I don't know, Groove sound. I really don't know what, what I'm, how to define it. But everybody hated the fifth one. That was where he decided. Well, shit. Rob Zombie can't sing, and I can, and he's getting a big career with just a drum machine. I'll just fire these guys, and I'll just set up a drum machine, and I'll do that. But, but the songwriting wasn't there, and the the the, the elements that made the first four albums so compelling weren't there. And then he began to have problems with his voice, and then he, he got, just got lazier. There were moments on uh, the sixth one and the seventh one, but the guitar playing was ham-handed. You could tell that he wrote the riffs. Uh, anyway. And, okay, now related to that, another topic is Henry Rollins. I used to be a big Henry Rollins fan. And as with a lot of people that I have admired or um, felt were eminently emulatable, uh... I became disillusioned with him because I began to see that it, a lot of it was a put on. Um, I've been to see him speak twice, and at w one time when I saw him, um, he went on and on about how bad TV is for for you and don't watch TV, and then he got a TV show. I just don't. And then he broke up the original band. Same thing with, you know, same thing as Danzig. Broke up the original band. And I don't know. It, it, it wasn't, so, I mean, it was partly that he began to get on my nerves, but it's also partly that I got to a point in my life where I just felt I'd grown too old and mature to be having so-called heroes. I say that and I still think Mick Jagger's fantastic. Well, a lot of, I like a lot of people, but that doesn't mean that they're heroes. To me, a hero is somebody that you can, for lack of a better term, look up to. And take elements of their life and try to emulate them, you know, but there's a, there's a fine line between doing that at a reasonable level and taking it too far. Um, but I think it's interesting he's supposedly retired from music. I just, I don't know. I was surprised to find out that some person estimated his wealth at $6 million. I mean, that's about right, I would suppose, for somebody who's been working all these years. But do his books really sell that much? 
do his do his albums really sell that much? I suppose some of that came from a, a record deal he might have gotten in the past. I don't know. He's just such an odd person. Okay, if I can get to a place where I can look at the card, I'll get to the next topic. Let's see here. All right. Is this guy really going to turn right from this lane? Why is this turn signal on? All right, what's next? Oh, this says. I can't read the. I can't read what that says. Oh, new Bond movie, Dune, etc. Okay. I have no interest in the new Bond movie. I have not seen any of the Daniel Craig movies. I just don't care. Do not give a shit. And part of that is because I just don't care about movies anymore. And also because the whole Bond thing is played out. I used to be a huge Bond fan. The Dune movie, no interest in seeing it. I've read the book twice. And I've seen the David Lynch movie, which I think is fine. A lot of people think it's just, I don't know, ham-handed, but um, it's all right. I went to see it at the theater when it first came out, and um, the studio was so concerned that there was that it would be confusing and there was so much terminology people wouldn't understand that they passed out a little sheet a glossary on a piece of paper um, with all the terms laid out and um, I've still got it it's in my scrapbook I think somebody told me that'd be worth a lot of money you shouldn't have taped it into your scrapbook I'm never going to sell it me a break. All right. Let me see what else is on the list. Uh, Brian Ferry, Brown Noise, Frank Hopman or Hopeman. Okay. Um, as I've said before, when I'm painting on the weekends, it's really hard for me to find anything I want to listen to. So I tried one of these 12-hour videos of brown noise, and for about 15 minutes, I really found it engaging because, <clears throat> to me, it was reminiscent of the sound of riding home on the school bus on like a, near the end of the school year. There's not many people on the bus. Nobody's talking. Nobody's raising hell. The windows are down. The rumble of the bus over the road and the air coming through the windows. I remember the last time that I rode home on the bus, or one of the very last times I rode home on the bus. And I remember thinking to myself, this isn't going to last forever. You're about to start driving. And... Um, it was a peaceful, sort of bittersweet feeling. So I'm listening to this uh, brown nose, brown, brown, <laughs> brown noise uh, video while I'm painting, and it had that that sort of rumble. And I was like, "This is very peaceful. This is very because you can listen to it, and you can imagine that it's the sound of like a train." or a bus. It's just the sound of the vibrations. Um, okay, also, now there's a German caricaturist named Frank Hopman or Hopman. H-O-P-P-M-A-N-N. -N, and he is fantastic. His caricatures of the leading lights of our modern world are unbelievable. And there's such a measure of contempt visible in the drawings. Are they going to let me go? What is going on here? Are they stopping? <sighs> Jesus. I'm scared to do anything after watching all those car crash videos this weekend. Alright, here we go. Anyway, 
So, um, um, I'm, just, I'm always desperate to look at inspiring images, um, artwork, anything, just to get my aesthetic sensibilities satisfied. So I have his name on my uh, bookmarked on the, on the computer. So I looked him up and um, found a Pinterest page with a lot of his stuff on it. And some other people too. This guy named Pablo Pino, I think that's his name, um, found a character he did of Iggy Pop. And it, God, it was fantastic. It was, it was just a, it, it, again, I say it had, it displayed a contempt for him, but maybe that's not the right word, but it was, it was clearly an image of Iggy Pop the way he is now, with his bizarrely muscled and at the same time wrinkled body protruding from these tight blue jeans pulled down almost to the pubic level and um, that long lank blonde hair anyway it, looking at all looking at the looking at the way the images were constructed it's, it's the, um, especially with Frank Hoffman, it's, it's the throw everything on the paper school of drawing. And um, it's uh, giving me some ideas about what, what to do for some drawings I'm about to put onto the, um, about to include in the next issue of my online magazine. I reached a point, let it get over. I reached a point in the, this current issue where the narrative parts, narrative pages are complete. And now I, got, I have to do 24 pages of more or less random stuff. 12 of those are going to be completely random, just abstract drawings. And 12 are going to be single panel um, cartoons with captions and none of the recurring characters will be will be featured. So for the abstractions, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take my usual approach, but then when it comes to adding all the tinsel on top, I'm just going to go for it. Heavy, heavy blacks, a lot of smeared in pencil for the extra shading, and then and little pinpoints of white with paint to give those little tiny reflections you see in people's um, teeth, the edge of their nose, a Frank Hopman uh, hallmark. God, there's so many people, so many great artists. You'll never get to the end of it. I think I might have mentioned this before, but um, it's easy to get depressed when you start looking around at all the other people that are working. But I'm reminded again and again of the story of Hugh Masekela coming from Africa to New York to start his career as a um, professional trumpet player in the jazz scene. And he met up with Miles Davis, and he said, he met Miles Davis, and he, he told him, I, I'm just I'm so disheartened, because I, I get here and I just see how many great players there are, and I just don't know. I don't know if I can hack it against all these people. He said that Miles told him, you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about any of those people, because only you know what you know and that is a key component of my my art aesthetic 
only I can do what I do. Case in point, if I try to copy something that I see somebody else doing, it's a big failure. I can incorporate a feeling I get from other people's work, but it's not going to turn out looking like those people's work. It's going to be me, always. Oh, we're approaching the end of the episode. I thought the new George Rockall Schmidt was kind of old hat. The new, the, the new Sans Hosen. I listened to it. It was, you know, nice to hear those two voices talking to each other. But the whole idea of having a definite topic, I think they ought, they ought to just talk freely. All right, that's it. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.